You are listening to SPN, the Sports Podcasting Network. Welcome to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFootsall.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. And this is Simon Provan. Well, good afternoon to you, Simon Provan. How are we doing? I am doing good, Baxter. A little crazy. It's, you know, it's summertime and people think, oh, well, it's summer for a college professor. Time to relax. Now, it just just means I finally get time to catch up on all the chores at home that I have been able to do, like installing a new garage door opener. Oh, Uh, I've never done that before. That's something to look forward to. Well, I, I took my time with that. Three days it took me. But I wanted Three to make days. sure I, every single step How I did was the correct one. How hard is it to, to install one. a new garage door it's, opener? It's actually not too hard now that I got it done with because I got to do another one for other garage door. Oh. Um, but no, I just I wanted to make sure since it was my first time doing it, I was taking it step by makes step, sense. very slowly. Absolutely, oh, that makes sense. You know, you got to be got to be thorough, but at the same time, you know, don't want to take too long. How about, how like about yourself? How are you doing, uh, Baxter? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, those of that probably have been attuned to our social media pages uh, know that my wife and I had an exciting announcement this week. We found out that uh, we are going to be having a baby yes, boy in November. Congratulations. Thank you. We are very, very excited. I, I can't say the name that we are very much set on. I will say it does have some ties to the soccer world. So for anybody that knows me, when you do hear the baby name, at some point you'll be like, ah, well done. Well done. So hopefully, hopefully. So uh, November 30th is her due day right all now. Right. And we are, we're very excited about that and uh, very supportive, thankful for all the support as well that we've received. So thank you everybody well, for that. Well, tell you what, I'm, I'm going to be very excited to have Pele on the show very <laughs> soon. <laughs> Pele Colbert. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> She didn't want to go with the whole uh, David Beckenbauer Colburn. I thought, you know, I thought that would be a good one. Or, or Franz Beckenbauer. Franz Beckenbauer. I know his name, I swear. Or Manuel Nior. That would be a good one. Or Zlatan. I wanted Zlatan oh. Colburn, and she was like, ah. God bless you, Liz. Yeah, we love her. We love her. But she said no to Zlatan, which is probably the first time that's ever happened. In, any, in Zlatan's life, too, I'm sure, uh, right. telling her no. <laughs> anyway, we've got a great show in store for you today. We've got a bunch of different guests joining us. We'll be joined in our third segment by Washington Spirit and U.S. Women's International, Crystal Dunn. Fantastic, fantastic interview. Sweet, sweet gal, and we are excited to chat with her. We'll also be joined by the Milwaukee Torrent head coach and owner, Andy Davi, and their number 10, Declan Rodriguez. And then to wrap things up a little bit later on the show, the Cup.us founder and senior editor, Josh Hakala, as well, will be here with us to talk about the U.S. Open Cup, of course. And Covering a lot of ground Simon today. tries not to go too fangirly because he <laughs> loves talking about the U.S. Open Cup. And I, 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 I kind of tuned out for the interview. I'm like, all right, here's the interview. You guys talk. I'll be back in 10 minutes. In fact, Baxter, I didn't know that you smoked until that interview happened. <laughs> I did a couple things during the interview. I'm like, come on, let's go, guys. Goodness, took a 10-minute smoke break, and I came back. I think I did my taxes. Actually, the funny thing was, got my master's. after we hung up, Josh and I sat there and chatted even more. You kept talking, yeah. I was like, we need to keep going, guys. we got to keep recording other things. I'm like, you guys want each other's numbers? You can text. It's no big deal. I think you guys can Facebook friends now. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Either way, it was a fun interview, so we get to all of those later on in the show. But if you want to continue to listen to the show, which we are so incredibly grateful for, you can find us on Fridays on the Sports Podcasting Network at 11.30 a.m. Central Time and on demand on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and on Spreaker.com. And you can get all the latest information about the show on our website as well, 2 up front soccer. Dot weeks dot com backslash two up front soccer and of course we're on Facebook as well two up front just put that in the search engine and you'll find us there we're also on Twitter at two up front soccer he is at Baxter Colburn I think I'm at Simon Provan is that how this I whole think Twitter that's usually thing how it works, works. Yeah, yeah yeah my mind's still in that U.S. We're Open adding, Cup adding I know you're still like Josh. spider webs yes <laughs> ah. let it go it's okay Simon you can listen to the interview again later you'll be just fine. Either way, though, we are excited. We've got a great show in store for you today. First thing we need to start off, as we usually do in the beginning part of the show, is go around the soccer world, see what interesting news stories are taking place. And uh, we're going to stay domestically for the moment as we talk about uh, comments that the legend Andre Pirlo made about Major League Soccer, Simon. He says that the league is too fast. There's too much running, that he says. And traditionally, from some folks, you might stand there and say, well, what's the problem about having a fast league? You know, it's more entertaining, you know, much more action. But... The point that Pirlo makes, he says it's too fast from the fact that it's not technical. It's just a lot of right. run and gun, hope for the best, maybe counterattack, maybe get a goal if you're lucky. He said there's not a lot of real skill that goes into it. And to be fair, from the opposite side of things, Pirlo was old. 
He's mm-hmm. late 30s. Mm-hmm. He doesn't run very much. We've always, my friends and I used to joke about the Pirlo pace, have Pirlo pace during the game. He's got that little jog, the hands to his side, little jog, gets in space, pings the ball back, keeps him in a little jog, a little jog. <laughs> He's not much of, a, you know, much of a runner, but it's a very physical league, and someone like him at the latter half of his career is not used to probably getting beat up as much as he did, even in Serie A. Those guys just don't hit each other as hard as what you see here in MLS. Right, Serie A, La Liga, those are leagues about finesse. Um, you know, what he says about MLS, you could kind of argue the same thing a bit with the Premier League. It's a lot more They've gotten run a lot gun, faster, right? yeah. Um, I have, actually, Baxter, I have no problem with anything that he said, because it is true. Yeah. Um, each league is going to be different in that respect. I do think some of this is he didn't realize how fast this league is. Exactly. Oh, I agree with you on that one. Even like the the main, I think, quote that everyone's kind of honing in on, he says it's a very hard league to play, and it's very physical. There's a lot of running, so there is a lot of physical work, and to me, in my mind, too little play, which makes sense. I mean, he's a very creative midfielder. He made his exactly. life with right. pinpoint passes. You look at him, especially in Yankee Stadium, you go back to the NYC Derby there this last weekend, he didn't have time to do anything. Well, and that's part of what he's basing his experience on, is playing on a field yeah. that is so small. Exactly. I mean, that, that, that pitch at Yankee Stadium, I'll say it, it's ridiculous. It's terrible. It's ridiculous how small it is. Plus, you're playing on sod that's just laid over dirt, so it's going to be slippery. You know, so he's, uh, at least half of mm-hmm. his games are you know, played in this park that exactly. soccer Which just completely be limits in. him as a whole. And he does go on to kind of clarify, too, because he realized that he may have offended some people. And he said, Nah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. He's like, what I'm talking about is actually a system or a culture. I don't mean that the level of technical skills are low, which I agree with. I think the league has gotten a lot better with recently. He said, I just mean there is a cultural void that needs to be filled, which I agree with. And here's the thing. People need to get over the fact that this league is only 20 years old. Exactly. People need to get over the fact that soccer was reintroduced in this country in mm-hmm. 1970, then it died out, and really, for all intents and purposes, it wasn't until 1994 oh, that yeah. people started to go, oh, the World Cup this is soccer. It back. You know, so you can't force a soccer culture on a people. It has to come with time. Exactly. So that's the only thing I have a problem with is when you say, well, I'm just talking about that there's no soccer culture and that's, that's got to happen. Well, it will. It has to, mm-hmm. you know, exactly. and, and, but you can't, you can't just say, hey, guys, we need a soccer, soccer culture, and people go, oh, okay. Right, perfect. Here it is. Right? Ta-da. I mean, what no, happened in TFC was organic. What happened in Seattle was organic. What happens mm-hmm. in Portland, it's all organic. Exactly. And, and we do have towns. They're not going out we paying people to put butts in the culture. seats. They're like, look, we want to be there. That's why people like the New England Revolution are still aren't that popular is because the culture in that area. They're still very much whole New England Patriots, Boston Celtics, Bruins, everything else. Soccer is just... That the Northeast is just a hard area to put soccer. I feel like well, it, at which, times. And what's interesting about that is is the history. Here we go again. Yep, the exactly. history of soccer back in the when Northeast. the U.S. Open Cup first started. <laughs> That's right. Right. <laughs> Bethlehem, Bethlehem Steel. Bethlehem Steel. Yeah, five exactly. titles. Right. But but it, it's just a you know a side note. Sure. It's interesting. Now I do agree with Pirlo though. The the development in this country has to have has to happen. We had uh, Travis Lang. Uh, shout out to you, Travis, for this great comment he made about. Um, teaching kids early on how to play the game. I agree with everything you say there, Travis, so this next comment I'm making is not about you. But I want to tell all the fanboys out there that go on ESPN FC, that go on MLSsoccer.com, they haven't visited our site yet. But yep. uh, their comments are always about the development in this country sucks. You know, We need to get coaches who've played professionally. And I challenge those guys to actually get involved in the mm-hmm. game. Exactly. Because the development is happening. Baxter, you know that I coach my daughter's team. Yeah. I tell you what, man, I am so proud of those girls. They yeah. play a year up. And, you know, like this last weekend, yeah, we won a game. The weekend before that, we lost a game. I don't, care the about game. The, I yeah. don't care about the wins and losses. Exactly. What Especially I care at about age, how, yeah. Right. But the thing that, that does kill me um, is is development is happening in this country. And for people to say, you know, we just have too many moms and dads coaching soccer. Listen, there are a lot of moms and dads coaching now that are former pro players. I was going to say, I feel like gals like, you know, Julie Foudy and Leslie. I mean, Leslie Asborn's not a mother right now, but you talk about Michelle Akers and other ladies that, you know, are mothers now that have retired from the game. I mean, people, I'm sure like Sydney LaRue is going to probably coach at some point as well, too. She's a mother. Are people going to say, no, we don't want you with your extensive soccer background and resume? It's like... Come on, those sometimes are the people that you want the most. Yeah, sure, yes, okay, my daughter or my son, yes, is on the team. I understand how that looks at times, but still, look at the resume. I mean, I know right. it's, it's right. youth soccer, so you don't necessarily need to be like, show me your credentials, why are you capable of teaching this you know, U8 team? But at the same time, 
they want to be there, though. Right. And that's the thing. And if the soccer is going to continue to survive, you want people that are going to be there. You don't want Joe off the road. They'd be like, oh, I got to go coach my daughter's soccer team. Like, no, if Joe wants to be there, the team is going to thrive. Well, and what happens, too, I see a lot of comments about what has to happen, um, but nobody builds a bridge or, or has a solution exactly. there. Like, the thing that people harp on is the pay-for-play system. Listen, I, I'm part of a club that does pay-for-play. Just about every club out there is. I'm totally against it. But here's the problem. We're not like Europe where when we develop a kid and they go on and get transferred, Mm -hmm. that we get a portion of that money. That falls on U.S. soccer. Mm -hmm. U.S. soccer wants to try to push all these different developmental policies. But first and foremost, they got to get with it and award clubs with the money from these transfers fees so we don't have to have pay for play. Exactly. Exactly. Well, anyway, Travis, thank you for your comment. If you have more comments, you know, we always try to post things on Facebook as well and on Twitter. So let us know your thoughts. So shout out to you, Travis, for commenting on that. Uh, oh, throw-ins. One last thing, Baxter. Throw-ins. Yes. we got to get over teaching throw-ins. That'll happen. That'll, you true. can do that in five minutes. It's really not but rocket it science. it kills me during a game when a ref blows a whistle at U8, U10 for a bad throw-in. Because you know what? At this age, what we're trying to teach our kids is make a quick decision. First touch. Who cares if their foot goes off the ground a little bit? If exactly. they made that quick decision, they saw a player open and they play it, that's what we're worried about. So stop it with the bad throw-in calls. All right, now I'm off my soapbox. <laughs> anyway, quick little hits here before we run to a break. Uh, Louis van Gaal is out. They won the FA Cup, Manchester United, and they said, thanks, now leave. And he's out. Jose Mourinho is coming in. Say what you will. Some folks have said they would have preferred Pep Guardiola. They would have preferred other guys as the manager now. But Mourinho is the man now going forward, and we'll see what happens Yeah, with we it. haven't talked about this, Baxter. Do you think the main reason Louis van Gaal was fired was because, man, you knew that they could get Jose Mourinho? I think so. It's one of those things where it's like, look, he, you know, this manager is a good guy, but there's that other shiny thing just a little farther up. And if we can get the little extra shiny thing, yeah, why not? Let's well, screw, screw the two years of progress we may have made. Let's go for, let's go for the newer extra shiny well, thing. Well, it'll be interesting to see because a lot of people are wondering if Mourinho has just lost his magic touch after what happened mm, with Chelsea. That is very possible. And you could argue, too, that Chelsea had the better team than Man U did this year. Something to think about. All right, uh, quickly else before we go. Uh, the USA uh, beat Ecuador 1-0 thanks to a Darlington Nagby 90th minute goal. And uh, the USA also beat Puerto Rico as well, 3-1. to one, And more of just a, a courtesy call for Puerto Rico as well. Uh, we've got more stuff about the Copa America and all that other stuff coming up. Actually, on next week's show, we're going to dive a lot more deeply into the tournament. We're going to preview the, how the U.S. is going to do. Brian Dunseth of Sirius XM and the Bumpy Pitch and the original winger and his long list of resumes will be here to talk about that. And so many other things as well, too. And we haven't really dove too deeply into Copa America. We've done it a little bit. A little hit, next hits, week, yeah. I think we're going to really get after it, especially since opening day will be the day that the show comes out. That's right. June 3rd as well. That's right. So make sure you listen in for that. Yeah, I do want to just touch briefly on the USA-Ecuador. That mm-hmm. uh, I think a lot of people say the first half, whew, that was dreadful. It doesn't help when you only have, what, maybe 8,000 fans there. I don't know what the actual final number was, but... It's always tough to watch a game when, when there's such low attendance. But it really it w- does take the life out of a game, it does, I feel like. It does. But it was nice to see in the second half some of these younger guys, Darling Tignagmi, uh, Pulisic come in, mm-hmm. Pulisic, sorry, come in and uh, really start to own the game. I've got, I actually, for once, Baxter, I have some hope for the future. Ooh. But you just never know what card Klinsman's going to play. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, real quickly as we go to a break, Champions League takes place on Saturday, Simon. Any thoughts at all? It's basically it's the Madrid derby is all it, it is. is basically. I'll, I'll give you a prediction. Okay, sure. I, I love the way Simeone has uh, mm. Atletico playing. I am I'm going I'm going with Atletico. Are you? Yeah. Okay, that's actually who I was going to take too. I think. I mean, yeah. Real Madrid has the firepower, but. The way Simeone runs Atletico Madrid is just an entirely different machine. It resembles the German machine a little bit it at does. times, too, which is a little scary. And it all depends, though, also on how angry Ronaldo gets. We don't want to see him when he's <laughs> angry. He's kind of like the Hulk. And Gareth Bale, too, they're talking about restructuring the contract with Gareth Bale to keep him there for a long time. And Ronaldo said, too, that the Champions League is worth more than a La Liga title, which, as we know, is very true. Hello! Duh. All right, going to a break. When we come back, time for some NWSL action. The final undefeated team has fallen. The Washington Spirit will talk about them to Simon's Portland Thorns. Portland Thorns are still undefeated. Are they still undefeated? Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, did you look at that. What would you know? Anyway, we'll talk about that <laughs> technically. Anyway. All right, we'll talk about that when we come back. Much more to come right after this on 2 Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com.
Back here on another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. This is Simon Provan. Just a reminder, in our next segment, the woman, the myth, the legend, not the man, the myth, the woman, the myth, the legend, Crystal Dunn will be here with us from the Washington Spirit. An exciting interview you're not going to want to miss. As we mentioned earlier in the last segment, such a, a pleasure to get to chat with her and someone that you definitely need to keep an eye on, too, as she moves up through the U.S. women's national team ranks. And just, you know, great energy and just a such a smart player, smart yeah, person. Yeah, a sharp guy. Yeah. We, we said that was like the first thing we said after we got off the phone with her, like, she was sharp. Like, yes. just very in, into the know of what was going on and... It wasn't one of those, sometimes you get those interviews with people where it's like, yeah, here's your carbon cut, you know, answer, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, no, this is what it is. This is how I feel. This is what's going on. Let's move on. I'm like, okay, sounds good. Perfect. Right. Thanks, Crystal. You know, <laughs> she was a ton of fun, though. So we were thrilled to have the opportunity to speak with her so you can get that in our next segment. All right, Simon, speaking of the NWSL, let's, talk, let's take a look back at the week that was. The Houston Dash, the team that I've officially announced that I am supporting in NWSL, they lost, unfortunately. They, they lost a late, a late match uh, to the Orlando Pride. To be fair, the goal that was scored was a world-class finish that I don't think anybody could have scored, regardless of how good of a goalkeeper Lydia Williams is for the Houston Dash. Either way, though, the Dash as a whole, I've, I've pretty much watched every single game of the season of the Houston Dash. I don't know if it's the fact that Carly Lloyd is gone or what the issue is, but this offense cannot put it together for some reason. Rachel Daly, she started off the season hot. She can't seem to find anything moving forward, and the dash look very slow, very disorganized, and just can't, frankly, complete enough passes and even finish off their shots at the end of the day. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Just uh, you know, we're we're seeing this in MLS with a few teams too. Of just, it's almost as if teams are just trying to find their identity at this point yet you know it is it is not a terribly long season but but one of the longer seasons sure. in uh, professional women's soccer we've heard people mention that too before yeah it's a longer season than what some of them play in, right. in their other leagues right right absolutely so it's you know when when you do have a player like carly lloyd go out that is a huge blow to your it team it is yes and it so is. you know as, as they were just starting to find themselves now it's almost like they got to step back and go okay now who are we? Exactly. Well, I mean, Houston is blessed, though, to have so many different attacking options on this team, though, through the midfield and offensively as well. I mean, but even still, though, when you have you lose a, a player like Carly Lloyd, we maybe really are seeing the long-term effects of not having such a dominating presence in the midfield for the Dash. Well, and I think it speaks a little bit to depth as well there, back. It does. Yep, I'd agree with you on that one. But congratulations to the Orlando Pride. They are now 4-2. They jump to the second place in the NWSL power rankings as well. Ashlyn Harris doing a fantastic job. She's trying to win that second spot. Only two goalkeepers go to the Women's Olympics this year. They, they have three on the roster, but only two are technically there, and one of them is kind of an alternate. So she's doing everything in her power because unless Hope Solo gets injured before the Olympics, it's going to be Hope Solo number one. And then will it be Alyssa Nair? Will it be Ashlyn Harris? Right. Ashlyn Harris and Alyssa Nair both doing exceptionally well because if you look at the top two and three teams, Orlando Pride, Ashlyn Harris, Chicago Red Stars, Alyssa Nair, they're both doing exceptionally well so far this season. So we'll see if that ends up working out for them. Uh, Saturday ended up being the games where everybody decided to score. Everybody decided everybody, to score. Even, even those on the losing side Even those on the score. losing side. It was an absolutely chaotic day. The Washington Spirit beat Sky Blue FC 5-2. to two. Five to two. Up until this point, I don't think any game had top three goals so far in the season. Up until this week, just just to clarify, Baxter. Uh, yes. I know you've got Washington on your mind, but it was Western. I'm sorry, uh, New York Washington. Flash. Did I say the Washington New York you, Flash? You, you said no. You said Washington Spirit. Did I? You did. Oh, see, they're right yeah. underneath that on my yes, sheet. That's yes. probably what Western it was. New York Flash beat Western Sky New Blue York FC Flash. in uh, what is. You know, you could almost consider this if if there is a derby in sure. NWSL, this is it. Sky Blue obviously playing out of I shouldn't say obviously, some people don't know they play out of Jersey. And of course you got Western New York Flash there. Right there as well. Uh, well but you can yeah. make an argument though too about the whole Portland Seattle thing too. Well, that's true. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But yes, I know yes. I know what you're saying though. I mean, you've got Boston right there too. Those three teams in that general vicinity could all convolute. And Washington's right there too. There's really like a four pocket of Yeah, teams I'm just right thinking, you know, the few months that I spent in Jersey, how <laughs> Sure. Jersey, yeah. You know, you're from New Jersey, you don't like anybody from New York. You're from New York, all you do is make fun of people from New Jersey. Yeah, and if you're from anywhere else in the country, you make fun of both places, basically. <laughs> but yes, the Flash, they got a 5-2 victory. That certainly helps them in the table standings as a whole. They continue to move up now. We'll see if that ends up being a good thing for them. I mean, with that now, they move up into, I believe, fifth place now with a 3-3-0 three and three and record. 
eight goals for, eight goals against. They've won, they're one and one at home. They're two and two on the road. Are Inter- they consistent? Eh. Interesting, too, that uh, on May 21st, Western New York Flash had their head coach, Paul Riley, suspended mm-hmm. um, for some inappropriate conduct, it says, directed at match officials during their game against oh. Orlando Pride. On May 14th, took him seven days to issue that suspension. Interesting. Well, it'll be... Speaking of uh, speaking of Paul Riley, his former team, the Portland Thorns, they got a nice victory over the weekend against the Washington Spirit. The Washington Spirit, the team that many folks thought could not be touched, but we also voiced our, our concerns. They're like, look, Crystal Dunn can't do it all. Joanna Lohman, they, she can't do it all. Christine Naren, she can't do it all. And Portland was like, you're right. They can't. We can. And they did. Four to one. And one of the things that was really working in Portland's favor, this is the first time they were back at home in a month. Yeah. So you got that. You've got nearly 16,000 fans at Providence Park. You got Washington Spirit flying high. Pun not intended. That is true. There goes my watch. Uh, (laughs) Pun not intended. It's a bomb in the uh, studio. But (laughs) anyways, uh, you know, the Spirit do have to make that big trek. Mm-hmm. Across this large country of ours. That's true. So a lot of stuff working against Washington. And actually, how well Washington's playing, I think, kind of worked against their them. their first loss of the year. Yes, yes. And and Portland, talking about a team finding themselves, yeah. Portland has really turned on the heat. No and, kidding. You know, I... It wouldn't. It's not too far fetched to say that we could easily be seeing the thorns and the spirit duking it out the rest of the season. I I don't think a lot of folks would have a problem with that. I mean, personally, I'd like the dash to do a little bit better, but it's still very early on in the season, and a team that is continuing to try to make that uh, an issue for other people that no one's really talking about. The Chicago Red Stars. Yeah, it's surprisingly they're, uh, quietly. They're second place yeah, in the league. They have the same record as the Washington Spirit. Kristen Press is pretty much doing all the scoring, but at the same time, Alyssa Nair has done a great job in goal along with other players Fantastic through the midfield. Goal, so yes. I don't understand why not a lot of people are talking about the Red Stars. They're tied for the best record in the league. They're undefeated at home. They're 2-1-1 one, and one on the road. Mathematically and from a statistical standpoint and anybody else that's looking at it, you'd say, well, maybe they're better than the Washington Spirit. But at the same time, I mean, they, I feel like Chicago always kind of just gets passed over just a little bit sure yeah Yeah, sure maybe (laughs) possibly i don't know i mean the big story though of the weekend the boston breakers they scored a goal not only did they score a goal yes they won congratulations boston on the flip side what is going on with fc kansas city lord have mercy you think it's bad in boston it's worse than fc kansas city Uh, is is larue and rodriguez being gone really that big of a deal or is the team just not as good as people thought they were? I don't know. I really don't know at this point, honestly. I mean, um, now her well, name's escaping off- me. They had a big player retire, too. Um, shoot. I can't think of who her name is now. Huge midfielder. Oh, well. I'm sure it's important. It'll come to me at some point. <laughs> anyway. So Boston gets this victory, though. They're 1-5-0. and FC Kansas City, they're 0-4-2. So they have some points. They have some points. But at the same time, Boston and FC Kansas City miles behind. Even Seattle, who's in the dash, who all have seven points, and Sky Blue as well. But in the league like this, as you mentioned, it's a long season. Anything can happen. FC Kansas City could you know, get their ducks back in a row yep. sooner rather than later. But you but have to be concerned, though. What's crazy is that this team that has been fantastic the last couple of seasons... Sure. All of a sudden this year still hasn't gotten three points out of a game. Still winless. They've got a couple of draws. This is the back four to back losses. NWSL champion. Exactly. Back to back, which is very interesting. Something to keep an eye on. I don't I don't know. You know, give credit to uh goalkeeper uh, Libby Stout though for yeah. the Boston Breakers. You know, she she job. saves she's because you're on a team that's losing, you always think, man, what's going on with, with the yeah, back, you know? But she's actually it. been pretty strong this year and, and finally deserves that, mm-hmm. got the deserved shutout. And as we've mentioned on the show multiple times, it's not necessarily been the defense's fault. It's the fact that the breaker forwards and midfielders have hit the post, the, you know, literally everywhere except for the ball going across the line. They've done it this year. They've had penalty kicks. They've had all kinds of opportunities and just hasn't bounced their way, unfortunately. Right, but right. they finally, finally made that deadlock. Maybe Boston starts to surprise some people now moving forward, now that they've finally broken through and say, hey, we can score, we can win, watch out, world. Maybe. Maybe. I know it's a little far-fetched to consider how well some of the other teams have started, but we'll keep an eye on that. One other thing we want to make mention of before we run to a break, uh, Amandine Henri is the new signing for the Portland Thorns just a couple weeks ago. She says uh, she had some. She uh, had a comment this week that a lot of folks in the women's soccer world are excited about. She said that uh, she chose to come to the NWSL over playing in Ligue 1 over there in France. 
because uh, she likes the fact that you play a game weekly, and she said that the uh, the level of competition is much higher. And she said she has a, a great respect for the United States and the level of the national team, and she's she's thrilled to be here in the NWSL. And when a player, well, basically one of the top five to ten players in the world at the women's game comes out and says something like that, that continues to reassure those that support the NWSL, saying, we're doing something right. We've got the best women's league in the world. Right. For those people who make the argument that you know they don't watch MLS because it's not the best league sure. in the world or not even close to being the best league in the world for the men's side, well, then start watching the NWSL. Because guess what? It is the best league I've in the world so for women. I've told so many people so far this season, because I, and the, cause I you know post on Twitter or Facebook, yeah, I watch an NWSL game, and people are like, why are you, you know, women's soccer is boring. I'm like, have you watched an NWSL game? Because I guarantee to you, the technical ability, everything is going to be a hundred times better. Right. And does that mean there aren't boring games? No. I mean, no, we, you know, we saw a couple weeks ago, I, there was, there, I can't even remember which game it was, Baxter, because because it was pretty darn boring. But guess what? You're going to get that in every league. Exactly. You know, if you're watching Aston Villa play a, uh, well, Sunderland earlier in the season. Sure. That's a game I turned off. <laughs> yeah. And even still, you even look at some teams like you know, Man City and Manchester United. We've seen a couple 0-0 draws in those derbies as well with not right. a lot of action right. happening. Sometimes the teams just don't show up. Or that, like that's a part of the game. Chicago New England game. You exactly. Know? <laughs> oh, Lord. I still turn those games off, even though it's a rivalry game. <laughs> Sorry, Baxter. I had to throw that one No, at no. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. That. All right. We are going to go to a break when we come back. Crystal Dunn is here. You're not going to want to miss it. We've got so much more to get to here on the program. Stay with us. This is Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. Welcome back to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. And this is Simon Provan. Well, Simon Provan, we are headed back out east. We get to go to Washington again. We had a couple weeks ago, we had a chance to speak with head coach Jim Gabara of the Washington Spirit. We've chatted with Christine Nair. Now, now, Simon, we get to talk to Crystal Dunn of the Washington Spirit. She's a up-and-comer in the Washington Spirit's uh, system. She is a huge, huge impact player for the U.S. women's national team as well. She's exciting to watch. She's very nice as well. And now she's here on Two Up Front. <laughs> Crystal Dunn, welcome to Two Up Front. Hi, thank you guys for having me. You are welcome, Crystal. We are excited to have you on the program. Uh, as you as you just heard us talk about, we've had a couple other folks from the Spirit on, so we are excited to continue the, the tradition of having Washington Spirit folk here on Two Up Front. And uh, someone like you, Crystal, carries a lot of weight now in the soccer world for not being very old, Crystal. How are you handling all that pressure so early on in your career? Yeah, um, it is a lot of pressure, but I think it's important to kind of, you know, not let external factors kind of affect my game or, you know, my mood going into games and and things like that. Um, I think there's always going to be pressure, but, of course, pressure makes you better. It makes you, you know, feel on edge and makes you care about, you know, what you're doing. So, you know, pressure is not all that bad. I think if if you can handle it and manage it, that's um, obviously what can bring the best out of your game and, um, I think that's what it's been doing. So speaking of pressure, Crystal, we, we can't help but ask about what happened this weekend? <laughs> no, gosh, if there was any question to avoid, that <laughs> no. Um, yeah, you know, Portland played a really great game. I mean, they were super physical, super aggressive off the start. And um, for us, we just, you know, we never, I feel like we never woke up. You know, it was only until the second half that we were like, playing with urgency and playing like, you know, we really cared about being in the game. Mm. And, you know, at that point it was too late. We were down 3-0 in the first half. But, you know, a lot of those goals were totally, you know, huge errors on our part. And, you know, whether it's the first defender or the second defender or third defender, you know, it was, it's a, it was a collective as a team effort, obviously. But um, I just think that there were so many errors on our part and, um, Portland did a really good job of just putting them away. So, you know, before we knew it, we were down 3-0, and, you know, it was just one of those games. Well, so and it, it certainly it's doesn't... It's unfortunate. Yep. Yes, and it certainly doesn't help. Uh, that, that was the one thing I, I noticed watching the game is that it seemed like the Spirit did themselves in more, not to take away from Portland's game, but that you guys did do uh-huh. yourselves in more than um, the Thorns pressing on you. For example, you know, yeah. goalkeeper going for a clearance and bouncing off a defender uh-huh. going in your own net. Yeah. That's, We've all had that tough. happen more than once. Yeah, Crystal, you had yeah. a, you know, you, you showed, 
no pun intended, you showed your spirit in that game, though, with that amazing assist <laughs> that you had, taking the ball down on the right, uh, fighting very yeah. strongly off a defender, getting the ball in there, and, and uh, of course, Joanna Lohman with, with a fantastic goal as well. Does she know how to mm-hmm. score okay goals? Because every time I feel like <laughs> she touches the ball, it's always either like a bicycle kick or some diving yes, shot here or whatever. Like wild goals, yes. She's like so known for just like throwing her body in the game and she basically you know represents that with all her goals but it it was awesome she really does Um, she's fun to watch she is fun to watch i'm just so happy for her and like um it's just great to be on a team where you know you guys we just spoke about pressure and i feel like going into this 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 year was a lot of pressure on me to perform the way that i did last year and you know score a bunch of goals and you know obviously i haven't scored a goal this year and that's not weighing on me, but it is kind of like something that I do think about from time to time. But, you know, if I'm on a team where everyone's getting involved and everyone's scoring and we're winning games, I can't hang my head about me not scoring. And I feel like that is something that I had to go through this year, is feeling like, you know, the media is trying to make me feel like I should be upset about not scoring goals. But I was like, my team's in first place. I'm assisting some goals. We're winning. Like, who am I to be, you know, sitting in a corner pouting because I didn't score? And I feel like, you know, just having Joe on my team or having to put the ball away is something that, you know, I'm very grateful for. It just means that I don't have to be that person scoring. and I'm already having targets on my back. So, you know, it's very helpful having others contribute. Yes, especially, obviously, the pressures there. NWSL MVP last year. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, being in, being in a league, you're named MVP, and yet, you you know, you're playing in the best league in the world for women's soccer. You've got Kim Little, who was named BBC America's English mm-hmm. Football Women mm-hmm. Player of the Year. Incredibly talented. Of yeah. course, all, you know, mm-hmm. many of your U.S. women's national teammates. So I, I can understand where that pressure is coming from. Well, speaking of pressure, too, as a whole, Crystal, uh, you mentioned about being mm-hmm. for the Washington Spirit. You mentioned about being the, the defending MVP but now we kind of zoom out a little bit, and now we're on the international mm-hmm. stage. For someone like yourself, even though you're one of the younger folks on the team, you still carry a lot of weight at the international level, similar to some of your other counterparts that are still working their way through the system as well, like Morgan Bryan and Tobin Heath. But you, you made the roster for the two Japan friendlies coming up here before mm-hmm. uh, the final you know, reduction down for, this, uh, for the Olympic Games in Rio. What does that mean to even be the fact that you're in consideration to go to something like the Olympics? Um, it's such a really great, you know, just thought to have. Um, I feel like it's so hard to even focus on the Olympics throughout the season so far because we've been having game after game after game. And, you know, it's sometimes you kind of forget about the fact that the Olympics are coming up because you're so focused on the game that's coming up in a couple of days that, you know, you don't want to take your mind off of what's in front of you. Um, you know, national camp is coming up Friday and the girls haven't been together in six weeks. So this is going to be really crucial for us all to be able to get back on the same page and, you know, focus on the U.S. national team instead of being with our club team. So, you know, for me, I'm super excited to be in consideration, obviously, of making this roster because it's an 18-person roster. It's very tiny, you know, getting cut from a 23-person roster um, last year, was hard to take and you know just this roster being just smaller is you know is way harder I feel like so um for me to even be in consideration I'm super super excited about that um you know I just feel like I've worked my butt off all all year you know ever since last year I feel like you know I've always been trying to prove you know that I belong that I can you know play at this level and you know I think I've done that. You know, I might not start every game with the national team. You know, there are games that I might not even play, but I feel like the moments that I've been given with the team and the minutes that I've been given, you know, I've been pretty happy with, with what I've been doing. And I think that's basically all that I'm focusing on going forward is, you know, whatever minutes I'm given or whatever playing time I'm given, I just make the best of that opportunity. Talking with Crystal Dunn here of the Washington Spirit and U.S. Women's International team on Two Up Front. Crystal, I feel like the stars may be aligned a little bit for you, especially for the Olympics this coming year with uh, more well-known players like Amy Rodriguez and Sydney LaRue both being out uh, for other reasons, which kind of left the mm-hmm. forward pool just a little a little depleted, which it's hard to call it depleted because you still look at the names that are still around and you're just, any other national mm-hmm. team would be kind of like, well, how is that depleted? Because... You know, there are some fantastic mm-hmm. ladies still around, but because there's only four of you battling now, 
instead of possibly what would have been maybe six or even seven, depending on if others would have been called in as well. I feel like that does improve mm-hmm. your chances a little bit, but it's a fine line, I feel like, for, for a team that we all know is so closely knit like the U.S. Women's National Team because obviously so many of those ladies are your friends, but at the same time you're all still trying to go to work every day and you're still trying to compete for a job at the end of the day as mm-hmm. well. So are there little things that you're trying to do here and there to you know, put yourself a little bit farther up the totem pole at all, or are you just hoping for the best? Um, I wouldn't say it's like hoping for the best, like closing your eyes, crossing your fingers, but at the end of the day, um, you know, I think things happen for reasons, you know, coaches make decisions for particular reasons and, you know, all you can do is really put in your effort, you know, be coachable, you know, if your coaches are telling you something, obviously try to apply it to the game because obviously things like that they look for and um, with me, like I said, I've been, you know, doing my very best. I've scored 12 goals with the national team since I've gotten brought back in. And, um, you know, it's things like that, that I continue to just surprise myself. I continue to keep doing things that I'm like, wow, like I never, you know, saw myself doing that. And it's, you know, moments like that, that I'm just so excited about what the future has for me because, um, you know, just, I feel like good things obviously keep falling my way, but I don't think it's anything to do with, you know, me closing my eyes, crossing my fingers. It's, you know, me just putting in the work and, you know, whatever happens from this moment on happens, you know, if and when I go to the Olympics, obviously that's a dream come true. But, you know, I last year I've handled being cut from from a roster and I feel like if that happens again this year, you know, I would just have to deal with it for the second time in a row. So, you know, Krista, um, oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, nope, that was it. <laughs> you had said the word, wow, and when you look at your career, that's the first word that comes to my mind going mm-hmm. all the way back to your high school years there's not many mm-hmm. players that can say the only reason they missed a high school soccer game was because they were called up by the u.s youth national team uh, you know, all american in high school you won state championships in high school then you go to the mm-hmm. university of north carolina anybody who's a soccer fan knows the history of north carolina mm-hmm. and, and the, you know dean smith is famous for saying we're not a men's basketball school we're a women's <laughs> soccer school yes i love that quote yeah yep. Uh, you know, Herman Trophy finalist, All-American at North Carolina. Then, of course, drafted number one uh, to the Spirit, U.S. national team. Is this, I just have to ask you, is this the first time you faced any type of adversity <laughs> in your career with when, when you got caught? Yeah, it's actually crazy because I would say this is probably my second time. When I was with the youth, um, I want to say 15 teams, um, I actually didn't make our U- U.S. U15 national team, um, and that hurt pretty bad. And that's a pretty young age where I was kind of like, "Wow, this is like the first time, like, mm. you know, I wasn't chosen." You know, at that at that stage, you know, I really couldn't ever see myself not making a team. Um, but then it's funny after not making that team, I ended up getting called up to the to, to the U17, which is two obviously years older than that. And I was kind of like, "Well, that's funny. How did that work? I didn't make a U15 team, but..." ended up making a U-17 team. So I think it's things like that that, you know, it shows that it's really a coach's decision, you know. One coach didn't feel like I was, you know, good enough to be on a U-15 team, but our U-17 coach saw me and thought that I fit perfectly. So, um, you know, from taking away from my experience last year, you know, I just feel like, you know, it's 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 a person's opinion on, you know, where you're at and, and your ability and, you know, if you fit well with the team. And, yes, these people – have an important role like a head coach um but I think for me it was all about just kind of telling myself like hey you know I might not be ready now but it doesn't take away from my ability to play this game and um and that's basically how I you know took it last year. So Crystal you you kind of answered my next question but but hearing about you know you getting cut from the U15s if, if you're talking to young kids who perhaps are facing that adversity, kids who aren't used to losing, um, or kids who mm-hmm. feel like that's all they do is, is end up on losing teams or have some losing moments in life. Mm-hmm. Would, you, would you add anything to that message, talking to them and saying, hey, that, you know, don't let this define you? Yeah, no, definitely. I think that is the most important um, lesson that I have learned through my experience is, you know, I keep going back to this, but, you know, it's, it's one person's opinion on, you know, on your soccer career, but it could either, you know, make you toughen up and kind of make you be like, you know, I'm going to prove them wrong or, you know, I'm going to keep working or it could really make you crumble. And I, I've seen it go either way. And, 
you know, for me, everyone asks, like, you know, what was your motivation last year? Like, did you wake up every day and was like, you know, you got to prove yourself wrong? And I was like, you know what? It was about me waking up every day just being like, I have the opportunity now to get better than I was mm. before. Like, if I thought I was good then, like, I am now going to be a complete pit player. And, you know, that's what I was most excited about was stepping away from 2015 feeling like a completely new person. Like, thinking that I was good then – and then feeling like, you know, I've improved so much was just, like, the greatest thing that I can take away from from last year. So, yeah, to, to young kids who kind of go through their first kind of heartbreak, it, I just want to tell them, like, your career is going to be so long playing this sport. Right, so if yep. you sit and pout at age, like, <laughs> 10, 11, 12, 13, like, you have a very long career ahead yep. of you, and there's going to be some more down the road. So, you know, you got to learn how to deal with it then so that you're – prepared later you know awesome that's that's such a great attitude to hear um again especially from somebody who's as young as you are uh crystal this weekend the spirit are playing the houston dash a team that really is up and coming in the standings <laughs> Go dash. um mm-hmm. I, i'm assuming obviously you won't be there because you'll be at camp is that correct yes mm-hmm. so do you, do you have an opportunity then to at least check in on the team while you're at camp or are you pretty much just so focused on what's going on at national team camp that you don't really get a chance to get away and check in with uh, with your club team? No, I'll for sure be checking in. I just think that I'm flying on that day, so I'm hoping that I land well before the game is played so <laughs> I have time to kind of, you know, set things up and, and get on my computer and watch. But, no, I am, you know, I have so much confidence in my team. And, yes, coming off of, you know, a very, very tough loss and a very, very – big environment to play in um you know it's things it's games like that that make you actually appreciate the games that you play well as a team and and you win because you have to go through kind of like some games where you're like wow this game is real (laughs) brutal like you know for you to appreciate the good games that you you go through and stuff like that so you know i'm I'm really excited about my team i think this is i think that was just an eye-opener you know Mm -hmm. we we were we were dominating we were playing really well and i think that was a game that we probably went in a little too lackadaisical just you know going through the emotions and I just feel like you know we got put back in our place and now it's time for us to you know continue to fight and and kind of contribute things that we've always worked hard for and as playing well as a team and working hard for each other and hopefully that trickles into to the Houston game. Exactly. Well, this gives you an opportunity, too, as well, Crystal, from uh, an outsider looking in to kind of survey the team a little bit more. You'll have a little bit of extra time to really get an idea of say, hey, you know, I, I'm not a part of this game anymore. I can actually look outside and mm-hmm. get a more of a bird's eye view yeah. and, and then take those things back to, you know, training in the, in the next couple of weeks yeah, and say, hey, this is definitely. what I noticed. Fantastic. Well, Crystal, thank you so much for taking time here on Two Up Front today. Crystal Dunn, number 19 of the Washington Spirit, and she has two exciting games coming up against Japan as well. Good luck in those games. We are excited for you and the U.S. Women's National Team, and uh, hopefully we can check again and check in with you again in the future. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You are welcome. Thank you, Crystal. We are going to run to a break. When we come back, we've got a lot more exciting things to cover here on Two Up Front. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. Welcome back to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. And this is Simon Proben, now on the telephone. Simon, why, you were literally just here. Where where did you go? I had to jump out, and, uh, you know, after talking to Crystal Dunn, I, I, I needed to quench my thirst with some Crystal Light. Baxter. Oh, terrible. That is absolutely terrible. Hey, I'm a dad. I get the right to tell dad jokes. Hey, like I, I, I'm a dad. More I, months, right? I'm going to have to wait for your, uh, I'm going to have to get the official Simon Provan dad book when I become a father officially here in November, Simon. Yeah, I'm going to call it the Groners. <laughs> I like it. Well, Simon, we are excited. We get to welcome in uh, head coach Andy Davi of the Milwaukee Torrent and the number 10, Declan Rodriguez, to the program now to get an update on the season and the uh, exciting things coming up. Andy, Declan, welcome to the program, gentlemen. How are we doing today? Good. Thank you for having us. You're very welcome. Andy, nice to see you again, sir. How, uh, how have things been? So good so far. Thanks for having us so again. Good so, so, far. Far, so far, so good. So this far, way. so good. This so way. good, so far. No, Depending on how you say it. All good. Season started. Um, everything is good. Everything so is good. You've got your first official victory this last week and a 2-1 victory as well. How, how did it look being there live and in person and getting to see the team come together like that? It was, I mean, it was good to see, specifically when you see you have some results in the preseason where, where you normally think the results are not the way you wanted it, but mm-hmm. even that everybody knows 
they don't really matter because what matters is the season games. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> we drove Friday, Friday afternoon. We drove up to to Minnesota. It was a nice bus ride. Dinner on the road. Spent the night there. Um, I think the the preparation for the game was good. Or Declan can say maybe later something about this. Um, then then you suddenly arrive in Minnesota and you have this this weather here and suddenly you play boom in 80, 90 degrees on the field. Um, from the first minute of, of the game, we were in charge of the game. We scored pretty fast. We created good chances to score a little bit further. And uh, then in the second half, never in, we were in charge of the game, controlled the game without really creating some more chance in the second half. And boom, six minutes before the end, they get a PK. A mm. uh, guy just takes 50, 60 yards, could, could dribble through the whole field. And then in the box, there was a light touch. Could give it some, some reps would give it some reps, not, but at the end, uh, in the 92nd minute, our new addition, Drew Ruggles, scored the, the winning goal. So, and you can uh, imagine that the drive back was uh, pretty fun. It certainly makes for a much better time, I feel like, going on the road that first time together. Not only do you get to bond as a team a little bit more, because all your games have been in the vicinity, basically. You played at Whitefish Bay, you played at home a little bit, you've been all over the place, but you haven't gone that far spend right. that much time together as a team so you really find out more things about your players and you know about the organization as a whole so Declan from your perspective on the field you had the opportunity to obviously be a part of the game you know see how it all played out you've been with the team since the beginning as well too yeah. getting a victory like this in game number one what's the progression that you've seen as a player on the field since that first game all the way to now well I definitely think we've like gotten to know each other more as a team and as we started to grow it's just it's a different mentality when we step on the field during a season game compared to exhibition game. Mm-hmm. I mean, everyone's still getting to know each other. Positions are changing. But once like points are on the line, I definitely think people stepped up in certain positions and made it happen. We scraped it out. It wasn't by no means a big score line. Sure. But, well, wins a I win, mean, though, wins still. A win. Exactly. Exactly. So, and it's great to have that and for Davy as well in the Torrent organization. So. Yeah, I'm wondering you know, how big was it to have a number 99, James Weber, back on the field? Well, I mean, James is obviously, um, he, you know he can score out of every situation. And even if he doesn't score, he creates, he creates chances for his teammates. And he runs, he works his rear end off. And I mean, with his, with his injury, with his inflammation of his IT band, well, it's basically something that will never really go away. Uh, needs a lot of preparation. I mean, he's, he's before every practice, he's 30 minutes there earlier to work with the trainer, massage the knee, and he get, he gets all the time ultrasound. And it really, it takes for him a little bit more to get game ready than uh, obviously for all the other guys. But again, there's a reason why he's a team captain. And exactly, mm. exactly, um, that's exactly what, what we need and what he does. And he does a great job. He's really risen to the occasion, I feel like, the couple times he's been on the field this year. He hasn't fully been, and I'm curious to see what a fully healthy James Weber looks like, because we've seen the the injured James Weber score a couple times this year, so that's good good things for you to keep an eye on, at least saying, hey, once he's fully healthy, we might get an even better version of what we see. The games he played, he scored. Yeah, that's a great for as a coach. You're like, perfect, put him in. Exactly. yeah, but also otherwise, I mean, it's, it's, it's even with this injury, I mean, I can take you also, uh, we talked about on the way back about uh, Stuart Grable. I mean, he's injured. He came in from, from, uh, with an injury from, uh, from the wave season. Hmm. And, um, but he's there at every practice. He make the drive with us to Minnesota. I mean, the uh, character of the team shows really in those, in those situations hmm. where you know, okay, is the player committed? Is he not committed? Is he committed to the other time? I mean, I mean, Stu is, uh, he fills up the water bottles at practice. He does everything. He, at the game in Minnesota, he, he, he took the stats for us and everything. I mean, absolutely committed. And, and this is just great to see. Yes, uh, I guess the, the opposite of that question is, or not even so much the opposite, but do you have an update on Ian Bennett's in, uh, injury that he picked up on international duty with the Canadian football team? Uh, Ian started practicing with us again on Monday. Oh, good. So That's he's good. good. It, it was not it was not a bad injury, but he, it really took him like two weeks to sit out. Um, I don't know ten days when he came back. Yeah, he sat out for ten days, and um, he looks good. He runs normal, and we actually practiced last night in inside because of uh, of the thunder and the lightning, and uh, he looked good. It's so nothing to worry about. So he is back um, with Bojan Jovicic. It looks like he's out for the season. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, he has a he has a tear in uh, in his um, adduct, adductor muscle. Hmm. Uh, looks also that he has probably um, a sports hernia, so it doesn't look good really with him. And 
with with Stu talk with Stu about a little bit. Um, he does his physical therapy, and the goal is we have the hopes that he can really play the first home game. Mm. How how much of a, a loss is that injury that you said to to Borhan? Well, I mean, Borhan is one of the of the most experienced players on on the team. I mean, he was a former youth, U.S. national player. Mm. I mean, that says it all, right? That with does. his experience with a really, he's a real number ten. Uh, of course, this is a loss, but so far the team stepped up. Um, I mean, it's it's always different if you have a guy like him playing already, and then suddenly you lose him. Mm-hmm. Basically, Bowen was not a couldn't play at all so far, so it doesn't affect our game of play right now. Okay, it would be different if we would play it like five six games and suddenly boom he's gone. That somebody else have to step up. But we know we knew from the beginning he's not there, so we don't know there was for us basically nothing that we needed to adjust. Sure. Oh, that makes sense. And you've got a lot of upcoming games as well. June 4th is your next game, you guys. will yes. travel down to Chicago to take on the Chicago Mustangs. And then your first home opener, the one that a lot of folks are really excited about at Elon Soccer Park. You take on the Minnesota Twin Stars again. From a from a soccer perspective, everybody loves a good rivalry. I know it's still very early. I know right. you've only really played one team in the general vicinity that you could start to even think about a rivalry before you take on Chicago and these other teams as well too but are you is there a team is either you have started to form something of a rivalry with or is it still way too early to even think about that or even a team that you'd be like you know what that'd be great to form a rivalry with this guys I just think with the history with the Milwaukee Wave and the Chicago Mustangs mm. and Milwaukee and Chicago in general yes I think I see as a real rivalry I would see the Chicago Mustangs nothing against the Twin Stars all across, and we have next year already. We know we have already two more teams coming in, but I think just from from historical point and with Cubs, Brewers, Wave, Mustangs, Bears, Packers, I think uh, that will be probably the rivalry that you want to have. Yeah, and that makes sense a lot too. And it's only an hour drive too. At the same time, it's Correct. not that you know four or five hour drive that you have to make it for the Mustangs. It's like, hey, I'm just shooting up or shooting down Correct. in Chicago or Milwaukee. You're gonna go check out this big rivalry game. Well, before that game even takes place, um, before even the game on the 11th takes place, you guys have an exciting event coming up that you've previewed a little bit, but if you have a little bit more information about what's going on on June 10th for us. We have a a, a home opener season kickoff party at uh, Brenner Brewing. Um, That means also kids can come with their parents. So because it's not a bar, we have this party in this this huge um, taste room and even the garage door will be open so we can we can actually also do some stuff outside uh, the party starts at six o'clock merchandise is available we're still going to have some season tickets on sale Great. at this day because the season ticket sale ends officially um, may 31st um, the players will all the whole team will be there at seven o'clock um, we we have a little a little q a that we're going to make we just want to mix and mangle we want that everybody gets excited for the for the next day um, just I just got today the message from the Elan Soccer Park that uh, we're allowed to tailgate like for already three hours before the game. Hey, that's awesome! So that is great, and we're just all excited. And we wanna we wanna be close to our friends. We want that our fans know, hey, when they see a torrent player, it doesn't matter where it is, that they can go up to the player and talk to him and chat with him. And uh, I'm pretty excited for this event. Hmm. So and I think I probably the the players maybe Declan can that the players what the players think about this. Yeah, exactly, Declan. What is this this organization as a whole that you being a part of here as the Milwaukee Torrent? You see how much community involvement they have too. But as a player's perspective, we've we've heard from Mandy the business mm-hmm. and the coaching side of it many times. But as a player's perspective, how do you react to it? I, I'm really excited for this, and especially people you don't know, and just like a new, especially a new team, and with new fans, it's you got to get to know the fans, and the more relationship we have with them, the more people come out to the games the more hyped we get, and it just makes for a better atmosphere pretty much. Absolutely. I mean, if you see when we're in Minnesota and there are 42 people yeah. mm. who drive to Minnesota, five and a half hours to, to Minnesota, and I mean, of course, there were some family members, but they were people nobody knew. Sure. And they were wearing a torn jersey and a torn scarf, and then after the game, they come down and want pictures, and th- that's just cool. And and this is this is a, a dream again, really starting to build itself. Dream up. to build, and this is what what motivates me as as the owner, and and obviously then when the when the players see this, and that's just cool. Mm. So and this is why it's important that we really do this uh, this this event. And the buses, the buses from the yeah, the, we had the two buses passing. That's what we saw, us. Yeah, we saw they that on all, Facebook too. All that signed with Go Torrent and that's Torrent amazing. Bus. I mean, you're doing. See, you guys are making waves, and you're making a torrent, a torrential movement now. Torrential here. movement, exactly. There you go. Yeah, I just wanted to ask Declan since, uh, we, as you said, we've been talking to Andy quite a bit. Not that there's anything wrong with that, <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> but Declan, why the Milwaukee Torrent? 
instead of, uh, you know, perhaps another team to play with? Um, well, Davi approached me after my, <laughs> Davi approached me after my, uh, call, I just finished up college at UWM and I'm finishing up my degree here. So oh. I finished up by the end of summer and then it worked with my schedule and hopefully it he was, was able to fit you in, Andy. That's what it was. He exactly. Was it, it worked with my schedule <laughs> and of course, look, like it's going to be big and the first professional team in Milwaukee, it's exciting to be a part of. So. I chose it, and once I decide to do something, I'm going to stick with it. So I'm sticking with Davi, and I'm excited to be a part of it. Very admirable. I think it's a great answer. just wanted to hear some of that history because we, we don't always get to hear from the player's perspective why they might be playing with a specific team. And I think it's important for the community to know that, and it's important for the community to see that there are local players, a ton of local players on the Milwaukee Torrent. One of the things, too, Andy, looking ahead, uh, it's still maybe a year or so off, too. I think you may have told us about this in the past, but being able to compete for the Lamar U.S. Open Cup as well, that's something that's obviously a goal in mind, especially being a professional organization uh, and working your way up as well, too, through the through the ranks. Do you have any updates about when you guys can potentially start competing in a tournament like that? <clears throat> well, you know, I mean, we can we can register for 2017. Okay, um, great. The one, the one thing that, that's going to happen... Um, because we play this year the provisional season, sure. So that means we have to play those play-in games. The play-in games will be probably October, mm. November. So that means um, if the guys choose to play in the fall somewhere else, mm -hmm. they won't be probably available to me. Gotcha. So, but um, I still think that we're going to have a have a squad together who can who can compete. I want to do it. You should do it. It's it's a great thing. People like the the Open Cup. It is it is a great way also to to present yourself on an even more uh, national focus. Um, obviously, um, once you qualify, you need to mm. have a lot of money for it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it's uh, the the sports component should come first. And uh, my goal is, and I said this before, that. I want to play in the Open Cup. Mm -hmm. And you mean looking at the, the general teams that you might have to deal with, too. You've got look, teams like the, the Michigan Bucks, Detroit City FC, Louisville City FC, the Indy 11, so yeah. the Chicago Fire, obviously, if you make it through that far. But there are certainly teams that would be in the general vicinity that would maybe not make it as expensive right. for the travel right. immediately. Right. But it's certainly something that... Uh, would be very great to see, you know, and you know, Absolutely. a bigger tournament like that as well for players, you know, hypes things up and for fans as well right. too. But uh, one other thing before we let you go here, Andy, you've had really, really good response from the fans, and I, I'm curious to know if there's any fan stories or anything that's really happened so far that you kind of sit back or even lay in your bed at night going, "Wow, this is actually happening," and "Wow, we're actually making a difference in this community." in terms of like bringing soccer and just even your outreach too. I mean, I see players and you guys all the time are at schools, reading books to kids. You're yeah. doing all kinds of stuff like this, which is very admirable. Well, it's, um, like I said, you, you guys know how much I have, I have going on. I still don't, really don't have the time to sit back and breathe in and really think about what's, I mean, like I said, when, when it's, it's cool when, when we went to Minnesota and this was really the first official match. And then after the game, got a little bit sentimental, mm. um, it's just in, in that moment, but I, I seriously still do not have the time when I'm at home or to sit back and say, wow, you really did this alone, um, getting, all, getting all the sponsors mm -hmm. in, not really with a lot of support from, like I said again, from, from the town of Milwaukee or, or other, other clubs. Um, yeah, but the people want it, and like I said, I said this before, it doesn't matter if it's one, ten, a hundred or a thousand people in the stands. Mm -hmm. You have to do this. I mean, I can tell you what what I, where I really thought few few days ago, where I thought, wow, this is great. I got a phone call from Admiral, and they said, hey, we have we have to reorder those those patches for you, mm. and that's the third time. And every time they order, they order three hundred and fifty. Oh. So that means so people are buying. Them. We sold already like seven hundred items just at the Admiral store. With the with the torrent logo on it, wow. and that doesn't include the gear that I got for the guys. Look at that! And Look then we that. have the second online store uh, running mm -hmm. uh, from Visual Impressions, what is basically like normal shirts, caps, um, and stuff. And then now that since yesterday, Stephens they also sell normal torrent, I saw that, torrent, yeah. uh, torrent t-shirts. I mean, this is then when you think, wow, this is cool. But it basically it always hits me when when I see somebody that I do not know wearing torrent gear. Wow. Okay. 
Declan, is similar situations for you at all? Yeah, I mean, I've been approached a couple times by people who are fans and stuff and saying hello, and it's awesome to see. And especially once the summer comes around, the players will be much more involved in camps and stuff and out in the community. So definitely get to know the fans a lot better when it comes around. Thank you guys for uh, coming on out to uh, the studios and spending some time with us again. Absolutely. Andy Davi and Declan Rodriguez of the Milwaukee Torrent go and catch their next game, the first home game, June 11th. If you feel like traveling down to Chicago as well, why not Saturday, June 4th at 7 p.m. as well against the Chicago Mustangs. Andy Declan, thank you so much for being here with us on Two Up Front. Thank, thank you for having us again. You are welcome. Right, we are going to run to a break. You are listening to Two Up Front presented by ShopFutsal.com. Welcome back to another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFutsal.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. And this is Simon Provan. All right, Simon. You especially are a very big fan of what we're about to talk to, uh, talk about and talk to as well. We're going to talk to a very wonderful person in just a moment. The U.S. Open Cup, Simon, one of the oldest tournaments, not only in America, but in the world. Absolutely. And that's, what, that's why I love it. You know, it, it pits against the, the minnows against the big boys. And sometimes the big boys get a little too confident and they get bit. Namely, my New England Revolution, unfortunately. <laughs> But, uh, Simon, now we have an opportunity to speak with somebody very important, a part of uh, the Cup.us. Who are we speaking with, Simon? Josh Hakala, who is the founder of the Cup.us. I know it used to have a different name, but Josh, uh, it's the Cup.us. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Glad to have you here, Josh. All right, well, this year's tournament especially, Josh, has been a little bit of fun. Uh, we've seen maybe some upsets depending on who you follow, but for someone like you who, as we would maybe basically call it a religion, you, you religiously cover and follow this league, or this tournament, I should say. What have you noticed so far about the tournament this year? You know, I think we've seen a pretty normal amount of what you would call upsets. Uh, I, I really I can't call league to league or division to division upsets. Uh, when the amateur teams play each other, you can debate all you want about what league is better between the PDL and the NPSL and, and all that. But really, at the end of the day, they're they're all pretty much amateur teams. Uh, the the best the best PDL teams are you know, would, would do well against the worst NPSL teams. They, they're really kind of all on a, on a, on the same level for the most part. So uh, we really, you know, can't really call upsets in the first round. Um, but in the second round, we had some nice ones, uh, you know, some interesting matchups. Uh, the Lansdowne boys, the Cosmopolitan League team, uh, knocked off the Pittsburgh Riverhounds, which mm. I, I, I have to feel for the Pittsburgh Riverhounds fans. It seems like they, them and the, the Orange County Blues just seem to be that, you know, those those teams that if an amateur team gets pitted up against, they're like, well, we could beat those guys. <laughs> it, just, it just happens. And and not because they don't have good – it just historically they, they lose more often than the other teams. But mm. um, So we had that upset, and uh, the Des Moines Menace knocked off the Tulsa Roughnecks. And, uh, and we've got a few amateur teams going into the third round. So I think that uh, makes for some good drama because, you know, what the, the pinnacle of the tournament is, what, you know, Throw away the, the final. The final is the final. We we know that. That's the championship. But sure. the best part of the tournament is the fourth round. There's no – it's very uh, – I don't know what case you could make against that. Because exactly. It's, it's, every game is Major League Soccer against a lower division team, with the exception of there's one MLS versus MLS game. But, I say um, that's uh, but, Portland and San Jose that will be playing each other, right? right? So but, that's, uh, that's what we're playing for now. I think the third round is a little underrated – because I mean, it's it's very easy to market the third round because you can say to any local media or even national media and say, "Here's the storyline: we beat these guys, this team that you've never heard of that we're going to play in this next round. <laughs> if we beat those guys, we're going to play a major league soccer team, and well, that's a, that's an easy sell to anybody." Yeah, so you know, I, I think that's it. Yeah, back in the day, my uh, my brothers had played for the Milwaukee Bar Bavarians Majors team, which made a, a deep run into the U.S. Open Cup. This was probably three or four years ago where, uh, being familiar with the, the Des Moines Menace, I believe that was the team that yeah. they upset in the, I want to say the first round, and then they took care of somebody else in the second round, and then they ended up meeting what was at that time the Milwaukee Waves outdoor professional team. Uh, so yeah. it, it, as you're talking about, the local press, it was really cool to see them actually pay attention to soccer here in Milwaukee at the level that it was with this amateur team in Milwaukee full of um, ex rampage players, mm -hmm. which was a you know a now defunct professional team. <laughs> um, yeah. But you know having our I own local the, derby. I did the play. I did the play by play for that Milwaukee game. Oh, you the, did the Milwaukee derby. 
of, of it was an actual derby. Like we we say that I think we use that word a little too liberally, but it yeah, is. That, yes, I, that was uh, the first. It, I think that was the first open cup game I ever did play by play for. Oh, I, I basically that? called up Milwaukee. I, I lived in Lansing, Michigan at the time, and uh, you know it's like a five hour drive from there. And I sure. was like. I was like, hey, um, you guys broadcasting your game? And they're like, no. We're like, well, I work at a radio station, and you know, I have the equipment. I could just come and do it, and uh, and so I just did it. So, yeah, I remember remember that game very well. Yeah, so, and it, you know, it was unfortunate to see the Bavarians go down from my perspective, but it was it was pretty cool to see a packed house that night. I don't know if you remember that, but it was a yeah a well attended yeah, game. Crowd, and the winners and the winner of that game got the Chicago Fire, and I, I called that game as well. And oh, it great! Was, uh, it was a it, that that's exactly it. It was like a great Milwaukee versus Chicago matchup, and uh, that's kind of what makes the tournament great. Is you have these teams that normally wouldn't play each other, and they get to play each other in a game that matters. Yeah, and I think it's smart on U.S. Soccer's part about having these be regional games, so even these amateur teams can afford at least in the early rounds the travel. Exactly. No, I agree right. with you on that one. Now, Josh, question for you in this in this realm. I feel like. One of the constant debates that we hear, at least in U.S. soccer, has to do with the fact of the NASL uh, being, you know, trying to rival that first division status with MLS. And so often, I feel like when the NASL teams get that opportunity to finally make meet these MLS teams, usually for the only time that they see them all year in that fourth round, and sometimes the round of 16, depending on how things shift out for them, traditionally, and correct me if I'm wrong, they haven't done that well, which kind of continues to put the the damper on this argument that the NASL can be as good as MLS one day. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, that it is what it is. I mean, they, I I think that you can make the argument that the best eleven players on the best MLS or the best NASL team or the best USL team could absolutely beat an MLS team. I mean, anybody can beat anybody. That's kind exactly, of what, what yep. makes the tournament so great. But really. I think we're talking about like the depth of the teams, and when you're talking about depth, major league soccer teams have bigger rosters. They have, you know, they have these, you know, many of them have youth academies and all these things built in that just the lower division teams just don't have, or at least don't have to that degree. And I think that you know that there is a talent gap, um, but it's soccer, and anything can happen on any given day. So I, I think that you're always going to see the top division have more success by and large. But that's kind of the beauty of cup competitions. We see that around the world. And, you know, like, I think, what was it, Crystal Palace was in the, the FA Cup final. Like, it, <laughs> and almost won there. there. Yeah. It, 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 save and, for a couple right. of, uh, you know, Manchester United late goals and going into the extra time, that was that was Crystal Palace's game to lose. We'll even look at yeah. Wigan Athletic, too, a couple of years ago. They, that's right. they went right. against Man City and they got relegated. <laughs> that's it's a great, yeah, it's a great story. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not bad for the other half of that story. But, yeah, but, I mean, the, the crazy thing that some a team that's, relegation bait could win the whole tournament. Exactly. Yeah. So going along those same lines, Josh, uh, 99, the Rochester Rhinos, you know, the last team to win the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup in the MLS era. And then, of course, in 2008, you had the Charleston Battery come close, losing 2-1 to D.C. United. When's the next time you think we're going to see a non-MLS club win this cup? I, I don't know when it'll be. I, I mean, I don't think anyone necessarily saw the 99 thing, you know, happened when, when it happened. I mean, I, we, we knew the Rochester was good. They had won the A-League the year before. And, and they'd, you know, they'd been always... good for a number of years before that as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't shocking, but I, I mean, it was surprising. Usually the, these things yeah, will peter out eventually. Um, they had made the final in 96, too, although, granted, it was a smaller tournament back then. But but still, it's it, it, a team like that, and you could argue that maybe the talent gap was even smaller back then. Sure, but it, it's I don't I it'll it'll happen. I'm sure. I mean, it, because it's soccer, and because I just think that we've had so many close calls. Like you mentioned, the the 08 Charleston Battery team. Um, we don't forget that the uh, the uh, Seattle Sounders. They, we forget that same year the Seattle Sounders were a USL team, and they made the semifinals. They but they lost in the final four, so they were there. Uh, in 2011, the Richmond Kickers in the USL. They were playing at the Chicago Fire in the semifinals, so right. they lost the game, I think, two to nothing. But you know, I mean, the ball bounces one way or another, and you know, they're in the championship. Exactly. So it's a, we've had a lot, we've had some close calls, and and I think a lot of the the lower division teams have has certainly bolstered their their rosters, and you know, they're going to put out their best teams when they can. Exactly. And with the, 
the exception of I think what, what was it Carolina Railhawks was it last year or the year before I can't remember that yeah that they were MLS actually, killers oh, I think gosh. they rested rested players in the Open Cup which I can't recall ever happening for a lower division team <laughs> well, um, and that's one that sounds like that's, something that's, Bruce Arena would do well I was going to say that's one thing that can be frustrating and and I understand it um, you know you see the the Premier League teams rest in players in the early round when they're playing against. Uh, for lack of a better phrase, lesser quality teams, pub leagues. But I think we're starting to see more MLS teams take this mm-hmm. even more seriously than they have in the past, save for a Bruce Arena team where we see Bruce Arena not even travel to Carolina. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> although, although to be fair, in the next one, in the next year, after they had been embarrassed to the two years in a row, they, uh, they, decided, they woke up the third year and were like, you know, let's not have that happen again. <laughs> and uh, they actually fielded a full team. And uh, I think Landon Donovan was in the starting line. Robbie Keane was in the Ooh, starting that line. Sound, yes, yes, that's but they, that but they still lost. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, but it was the fact that they tried. And but really, I, but aside from that, I mean, I think people are still, you know, people who maybe don't follow the tournament that closely, you know, they, they maybe are aware of like, you know, who who wins it or maybe a few upsets sure, here and yeah. there. But if you really look at the lineups that, that MLS teams put out. And we don't track it, although we probably will at some point because we just do things like that. Exactly. But you love those it, stats. Trying yeah. to figure out the quality of a lineup is really difficult to do because you have injuries, you have scheduling issues. So, you know, if they play a game on a Sunday, you're, you, I mean, what are you going to do if you have a game, a league game on a Sunday and then you have to turn around and play on a Saturday and then you got the game on Tuesday or Wednesday? So, I mean, you're not going to, it's like the, the fans that, that expect, these teams to feel their absolute if we have to beat the Martians best 11 like <laughs> then I don't I don't understand what they want from their teams like as far as like league games go so in if they're playing against a lower division team you should be able to beat a lower division team in with theory a, in theory <laughs> you'd like to think so in theory, you well, that's why so many people to. fall in love with soccer I feel like because anything can happen on any given day well Josh <laughs> You and I could talk about this for the next five hours, probably the next 24 hours. <laughs> I, right I, off I, the I air love talking this like, type of soccer right, and this type of tournament. But uh, the, the website is thecup.us. Josh Hakala, the founder, uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us. We'll check back in with you later in the tournament. Yeah, sounds good. Anytime. All right, Josh, thanks again for your time. All right, we are going to run to a break. When we come back, we've got more exciting action for you. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Two Up Front, presented by shopfutsal.com. Back inside the studio here for another edition of Two Up Front, presented by ShopFootsall.com. I'm Baxter Colburn. And this is Simon Proban. You're digging the music, Simon. I am digging. I'm kind of dancing around a little bit. A little bit of a move yeah. here. Yeah, it's fun, some fun stuff. <laughs> anyway, let's move into the world of Major League Soccer, Simon. An interesting weekend. Folks well, wait, I thought we were going to talk about Major League Dancing. Major League Dancing. <laughs> uh, Major League Bull Riding, I think, is another one. Major. It league, is. Major yeah. Bull Riding. Yeah. Major League Curling. It's a huge... Huge fantasy fan of that one. It's a lot of fun to play. <laughs> a lot of fun. It's, it's a big. It's a bit of a science, Simon. Don't uh, don't knock fantasy. I, curling. I am. Well, I'm not knocking. I'm not knocking curling. I just never knew there was fantasy curling. <laughs> that sounds like something. There's that, pretty much fantasy you know, anything nowadays. But if fantasy you, and curling. I mean, that sounds like something you might do in the morning with your hair. <laughs> I think my wife fantasy curled before she left the house this morning. Her hair looked beautiful. Anyway, Simon, let's look at some of the uh, the week that was okay. in, right. uh, in Major League Soccer. And uh, we can go from there and uh, see what happened. I think the game everyone's still buzzing about that I'm sure we should touch on for at least a second, which I'm sure a lot of fans would hope that we didn't, would be the NYC FC Red Bulls game. 7 nothing. Simon. I got a chance to watch this game through and through. I watched it live, and I couldn't even believe it. I thought I was, I thought I, my FIFA was playing or something because it was, it was bad. It was really, really Really bad. I was uh, I was listening to the game on my way to a game that I was coaching. Oh, nice! And I just yeah, I couldn't believe what the commentators were saying. Saying basically just saying that city didn't even exist. New York no. Red Bulls could have come out and just did a kick around. They really. That's basically what it was. And I continue to have the mindset that Josh Saunders is really not that good of a goalie. No, I've actually never thought that. Even when he was with LA, no. he, had, he had a decent season there. Uh, then, of course, he went into rehab, yep. which we don't know still what exactly for. Uh, but ever since he came out of there, you know, I love seeing that success story of somebody yeah. making their way through a, but, a rehab program, getting their life turned around. With all the but connections, as a goalkeeper, with all the connections whew. NYCFC has, with especially with Man City, I feel like they could loan out a younger, you know, youth goalie and 
honestly, I think he'd be better than Josh Saunders at this point. I at mean, this point, yeah. At what point do you say enough is enough? You know, let's move on. Well, there's a little controversy surrounding this game as well. After the game, David, I did it again. David, David Villa. David Villa. My, my dad's name is David, so it's so easy for me oh, to go there. I all didn't right? know that. Uh, David Villa coming out and saying that, well, anybody would have beat us today. There was nothing special about the Red Bulls. And Jesse Marsh took <laughs> exception to that comment, saying, no, we thoroughly destroyed New York City FC. They did. It, it, but to be fair for David Villa there, it was <laughs> one of those games that happens, and it doesn't happen very often in the sports world, where everything goes right. For one team. Yes. Everything. Yes. You look at everything that the Red Bulls did. There's no reason Dax McCarty, who is one of the shortest players on the field, beats guys that are miles taller than him on two corner kicks. You just That just doesn't happen. It shouldn't. Consistently. It shouldn't, but if you haven't prepared properly, exactly. that's what happens. Exactly. And, and that's what you heard. You heard Vieira talk about, well, you know what? We regroup. You know, I didn't want my, I didn't want my guys thinking about this game all week long because they'd be too tired by the time, mentally too tired by the time the game actually came. <laughs> and where Jesse Marsh is saying, no, we... We, we, we got hyped up for this it. game. Yeah. We needed this game. And they did. I mean, honestly, if you're a Red Bulls fan, you got, you got six points this week. You beat the Fire earlier on the week, 1-0, and then you got a 7-0 victory as well. So that's two clean sheets for your defense and Luis Robles, which boosts the confidence. And you get eight goals in two games. That's a pretty big confidence that's, booster right yes, there. If you're looking Absolutely. for a team to start keeping an eye on, the Red Bulls are certainly one that we are going to mention later on in the program. We saw it happen last year as well. Mm-hmm. Some struggles. They came out of the gate hot last year, then they struggled for a while, then they started exactly. to turn the heat back up. Yep, exactly. Well, speaking of NYCFC, though, right before this game, everyone thought, well, maybe they're doing all right. They tied Toronto 1-1 in Toronto. Not, you know, Usually not the easiest place to win in, especially in Toronto, but... Right now, Toronto, after that one game that they did win, they've kind of struggled at home, though, recently, yeah, too. Right. So that kind of reassured NYC FC fans, like, hey, we're not a bad team. We can do anything we want. For Toronto FC fans, like, really? We can't even beat NYC FC? Right, right. So a little bit of, you know, issue there, for, especially and for the Reds. Speaking of fantasy, Baxter. Yeah. Going into the weekend. Going into the weekend, I was so excited. David Villa. Giovinco, CJ Sapong, all starting up front. Yeah. I'm looking at TFC having two games. I'm looking at NYC That's a good lineup. having two games, playing against teams that they should all be scoring against. And I think I would get, what, five points out of those guys? <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, I didn't do that My well. worst week in fantasy. Sorry to cut no, you're you off. Fine. My worst week in fantasy. Mm. The first time I play Via and Giovinco up top. Don't I would say don't completely abandon that ship, but you might want to look for a different guy besides Via, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Somebody. Yes. Somebody else, you know. Dom Dwyer's starting to finally get a little bit of form back. He scored a goal for me as well uh, in fantasy. But I got 30 points between Valeri and Piatti, only because I captained Valeri. Um, I only got 55 total points this week, or last week. But I'm, I'm excited for this week, though. It's a double week for uh, Orlando and for Philadelphia as well. I only have two Philly, Philly players, though, for my for my double. But I feel good about my midfield right now of Valeri, Piatti, Lee Wynn, and Chris Pontius as well. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I don't have anybody from Orlando playing. I do have CJ I Sapong. thought about Molino, but I was like, you're not doing that great. And Well, of course, he goes out and of course. scores a goal. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I have Valeri as well. I'm happy to see that you finally are not captaining him because it was so frustrating to see him do well. I'm like, ah, oh, Baxter's getting double points. I'm only getting single exactly. points. But I don't ever want to not captain Giovinco again. I've made just, that mistake twice. As long as he's on your roster the rest of the year, just do it. Yes. You know, I captain Andre Blake this week, which we'll get to a little bit here in our, in our predictions and everything else that's happening through right. the week. But uh, he's got a double game. He's been playing really well so far. I've already got 14 points from him from one game. He's still got one more game left. So MLS Fantasy. My forwards, I'm kind of in about Ordoro, McGee, and uh, so- Solanac. Sol- Solanac, I think, from, Col- from Colorado. Yeah, it's it's interesting this this upcoming week because uh, you don't have – no, I'm thinking – I'm sorry. I'm thinking – Two I'm, weeks. I'm a week ahead. Two weeks. week yeah. ahead of myself. Yep. Next week's show, we can Edit have this that out of the program there, Baxter. Next week's conversation, we'll talk about that. But I know what you're saying, yes. Aside from that, though, the Chicago Fire, they got a very much-needed win this week. They beat the even worse Houston Dynamo 1-0. I honestly thought Houston was the better team coming into this game, but the Fire, they're weird, they're pesky, and they just managed to beat a team that they maybe were underrated about. Which makes you wonder, did Owen Coyle actually get up and leave mm. Houston, or, or did Was the brass he... say, listen, get you out. lost to the fire. You lost to Chicago. <sighs> you uh, you've fire? done nothing really in the couple of years you've been here. True. It, well, I guess year and a half. With the team right? that he had, which arguably right. is very good. Right. you got players like Alex on the team. Giles uh, Barnes. Cubo Torres, who, uh, you know. 
He's up and down, but still a very good forward as right. a whole through so and through. So I'm interested to see if, if Owen Coyle actually ends up with a team in England. It was mm-hmm. rumored that he was going to be over at uh, Celtic, That's which true. Brendan Rodgers ended up being hired yep. for. So you just wonder if something else was in the works. Well, I made the comment yesterday on Facebook, Simon. I said, hey, Everton's looking for a manager, aren't they? You can go after, they uh, are. Go after yeah. Owen Coyle. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, never. Never. Don't do it. Simon, you should put your resume in. Why not? Your, your, your resume. Uh, You're like, I've coached my daughters. Uh, right. what now? U9, U10 teams. I'm qualified. Did you guys we, see how you played, played last year? We played a year up. Exactly. Did you see how many goals we had? It was ridiculous. Sign me up. Everton would be like, thanks. No. <laughs> no, I, I don't even think it would get that far. <laughs> no. They would, they would stop the email from even getting right. over the Atlantic. to be like, meh, stop. It would just crash in the Atlantic. Be like, sorry, you're done. Anyway, aside from that, though, Toronto FC and Columbus, they tied 0-0. Columbus continuing to prove that Kai Kamara actually was a big part of their offense. He's gone. They can't really do much of anything aside from that. I think they've had two draws since Kamara's left, which on the flip side of that, the Revolution, they won that first game with Kai Kamara. Now they lost the second game to a not even full-strength FC Dallas No, and this is a huge turning point for FC Dallas because they've gone on the road and... uh, a couple of times this year have gotten destroyed on the road. Yeah. So for them to come to New England and dominate that game, 4-2. Yeah. to two, Three game win streak now yes, for FC Dallas. Yes. I mean, you talk about, and they're scoring a lot of goals in the games they are too. They beat Portland a couple of weeks ago, 2-1. to one. They beat Seattle 2-0, two, two, nil, both at home. Then they went to New England, you know, a bit, of a bit of a flight if you want to go from, you know, Texas up to the northeast there. And then they beat uh, the Revolution 4-2. to two. So the goals that were originally abandoning them have come back in bunches, and they've been doing it without some of their better players. No, right. Maxi Rudy in this game. I think Mauro Diaz wasn't around very much for this one as well, but they're finding different guys to step up and score goals. So good for them. You know? I mean, obviously I'm sad that the Revolution lost this game, but the Revs are still trying to work things out, honestly, with a couple of injuries that they've got and really trying to see what they're going to do. with Because they've, they've almost got too many options now for, right. for attacking, so they've got to figure out where they're going to put people. So we'll see. Somebody else that we saw that got a nice goal, Kyle Lahren. He scored twice. Kaka did some really nice assisting as well. And you, you mentioned this off there, kind of maybe of an upset. Orlando beating Montreal. Yeah, you know, Montreal's been, Montreal has been a bit up and down. But I think on paper they still have a stronger team. So to see Orlando, who's been struggling a bit, come out and, and beat a Piatti-led Montreal impact 2-1, yep. to one, that bodes well for Orlando City. I agree. I agree with you on that one. RSL, they beat Sporting Kansas City 3-1. to one. The wheels continue to come farther and farther and farther off for Sporting Kansas City. I really don't feel like Peter Vermees needs to still be employed, honestly, at that point. Just Maybe you need to swap somebody else in. Uh, maybe. I, I think, well, we've talked about this before, and you know I support that. I think it, it, Jason Christ. it's just one of those teams where the... Whatever you want to call it, the, the, the coaching, the managing, sure. is just dried up. I'd agree. Needs, needs to be some fresh ideas in there. You. You've got too talented of a team in Sporting Kansas City. Of course, it's unfortunate that you see Brad Davis have a ball bounce off his back and go yes. into the goal. But Not much you can do about that. No, but when that keeps happening and your team doesn't really respond, you know, Dwyer goes in and... It's funny, MLS Soccer actually has it down as Don Dwyer instead of Don Dwyer. Oh, that's his brother. Yeah, right. So I double, <laughs> I did, brother. No wonder I didn't get fantasy points for that this week. Anyways, anyways you, uh, you know, they do come back and get a goal, but then three minutes later they fall apart, and RSL gets back on this the board. Is not, and we've said this before, Sporting Kansas City, they're not a bad team. They've got good players. No. They really do. Some of them are on the Copa America roster, whatever that's worth. Oh, on the flip side... Colorado continues to Goodness. shock the league 1-0. They really do. And people I, still don't want to believe in them. No. It's the Leicester City of the Major League Soccer World, like you said on Facebook earlier this week. And then finally, the, the, the two big games on Sunday. Portland, they got a nice 4-2 victory over Vancouver. They sure did. And L.A. and San Jose. California eh. Classico strikes again. 1-1. Yeah. 1-1. One, one. One, one. No one cares. All right, quickly for our predictions for the week here. Uh, that was this last week. Simon beat me. Uh, he beat me 5-8 and eight to my 4-9 and nine over this last week. I don't know if there was anything that really took place that either of us... I also... I gave us the points for the USA-Puerto Rico. I didn't... Okay. Because they did win. They did. They did I mean, win. nobody thought that Puerto Rico was going to score a goal, honestly. We no, get that, that, we, get, we hey, get that by default, which is a great goal. It was, it was a great goal. Um, and, and what's great about that, too, is that player, I believe, played at Virginia. He went to college in the U.S. So. He did, yeah. He was a Conference USA player, too. That's, so that's okay. what so folks okay. are like, hey, that's good to hear. All right, this upcoming week, let's do this quickly. Orlando and Philly, which already took place. It did. We can't count that. Shoot. I mean, I took Philly. 
but it doesn't I, count. I, I, yeah, I didn't see our nice document uh, in here. It's all good. USA Ecuador, we missed that one as well, too, so I would have taken the U.S. anyway. Uh, Sporting Kansas City, D.C. United. Let's start with that one, then. <laughs> what do you think? This is a tough one to call. That's what I think. I'm going to take uh, a draw. Uh, you are taking a draw. I was thinking Teams of doing are... this. You know what? I'm going to take D.C. Okay. Not, I'd a, love, bad, I'd love not to a bad see, move, honestly. I'd love to see Nagel get a goal this week. How about that? Is he on your DC fantasy United? team? He is on my That's fantasy why. team. Okay. Uh, Vancouver and Houston. Vancouver, I feel like, is a fairly easy option in this one. Yeah, I, uh, I also am going with Vancouver. Uh, the New York Red Bulls and Toronto FC. The New York Red Bulls are hot. And I'm going to continue to ride that train for a little bit at least. Do it. I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to ride it as Are well. I was going to go with the draw. But Jump on the nah, Red Bulls train. Nah. So everybody enjoy the draw that will now happen since I'm changing my pick the to team, the Red the Bulls. The game's going to get canceled basically. Columbus and RSL at Columbus. RSL. I feel like is a fairly easy pick in that one. I sure do. So that's why I'm taking Columbus on that oh, one. Sure, it makes sense. The Revs hosting the Seattle Sounders. Neither team playing exceptionally well, but I'm going to have to go with the Revs on this one. L.A. and Montreal. Uh, oh, I'm, God, I'm LA. taking the Revs as well, by the are way. Are you okay? Yeah. Great. So at some point, my picks matter in this show. Sure, sure. You know who you are. As you were. <laughs> uh, what do you think about uh, uh, LA Montreal? And Montreal? LA? Uh, <laughs> now I made you just go la, la, la. No, la, la That's la, great. La, la. Montreal, uh, la, 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 la. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the Galaxy. Are you? Interesting. Uh, I took uh, Galaxy as well. USA and Bolivia, another tune-up game here before the Copa America. I have USA. I'm going to take a draw on this Interesting. one. Interesting. I wouldn't actually be shocked by that. Uh, F. Or what am I going? Chicago, Portland. I've got Portland winning this game. It's in Chicago. It is. I'm actually going to go with a draw because uh, Portland will obviously be without Nagby this week. That's true. That is true. So that may play a defining factor. Colorado and Philadelphia Ooh. at Colorado. I am going to go against the grain and say Philadelphia. They're going to go into Colorado to Dick Sporting Goods Park, and they are going to say, Enough! And they are going to shut down the Rapids. It certainly won't surprise me. Uh, you know, Jermaine Jones won't be with them. So, again, the heart of their team also missing. Yep. Uh, they still have the strong play of Zach McBeth. You know, I, I'm doing this a lot this week, Baxter, but I am going to play a draw Interesting. On this. Okay. Uh, San Jose and FC Dallas. In San Jose, I am going to take San Jose. FC Dallas take, has been a little spotty for me yeah, personally. I'm, I'm going to take San Jose as well. Okie doke. And finally, the game of the expansion, the expansion derby. It's year two of it, but still, they're young. NYC, FC, and our Orlando. I'm going to take Orlando. I liked what Kyle Lahren did last week. What do you think? I think it makes most sense to take Orlando, but I'm actually going to use the opposite reasoning here. Okay. Since the villains got so drubbed against the Red Bulls, they're going to respond in a great way. But it's at home, though. When have they ever done anything well for NYCFC at home? I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's go to a break. We'll wrap the show up right after this with our power looking rankings. Looking forward to Pirlo's complaints after that game. <laughs> we'll be right back on two up front right after this. Here in another edition of Two Up Front, where Simon doesn't care and I'm just hanging out. I'm Baxter Colburn. <laughs> this is Simon Proven. You are very. <laughs> whatever. He's kind of whatever with this week. Yeah. Kind of like an Andre Pirlo this week. You're just like well, maybe that's what whatever it is. It is. Yeah. You age like a fine wine, like he does. You don't have the you don't have the beard though, like he does. I d well, I did earlier this morning, but I that's but true. I trimmed it down, you shaved it down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll whatever. See. I don't know. Whatever. It's just one of those shows for us. Where we're just like, yeah, whatever. We're just having a fun time. We're hanging out. We're glad that you guys are here along with us as well as we wrap up another edition. Reminder, you can hear the show on Fridays at 11.30 a.m. Central Time on the Sports Podcasting Network and then on demand as well on iHeartRadio, iTunes, and on Spreaker. Dot com as well, and you can always find us on social media, Simon, can't you? You can. On Facebook, we are at 2 Up Front. On Twitter, we are at 2 Up Front Soccer. He is at Baxter Colburn. I am at Simon Provan. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's do some power rankings briefly here and then some I believes as well. Not a lot changing from what I'm looking at here at this, uh, this power rankings. We, we, do, we both finally said enough, 
after the NYCFC <laughs> spanking, we both drop kicked him out of our power. Yeah, rankings. I mean, I had him all the way up to number two, Woo! but you get beat seven zero, and you draw a game before that's sayonara. I, uh, yeah, I had him at three, so I don't feel as foolish for where. You well, know, I don't I feel had to drop foolish. Him a they were spots. They, they were, were number two. Yeah, they were playing very strong. You they were the second best team in the league. I did. No. At that point, they were. I mean, maybe. No, they're not. Not anymore. Hey, Baxter, three's not too far from two. Just but to... it's not two, though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So. Hey. What? Your number two is out of the rankings as well. What do you mean my number two? Oh, yeah. Well, yes, what are you going to uh... do? <laughs> they lost. So I dropped them. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you told me to shut up a couple weeks, so I'll tell you to shut up. Anyway, so this week, uh, we have the same five teams, just in slightly different fashion. Our four and five are different, Simon. Who do we got this week? Uh, my five is the New York Red Bulls, and my four is Philadelphia, mm. and it's the flip for you. Yes, Philly is five for me. The Red Bulls are four. Philadelphia, I, I feel like you know they're still a very good team. Mm-hmm. They continue to battle. They're technically one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference, so take that for what it is worth. And we keep forgetting to mention this on the program, too, Simon. Not one Eastern Conference team would make the playoffs in the West. Not one. That's sad. I don't think they now, would even finish in, in seventh place. Some of, that, some of that, Baxter, is the fact that there are a couple of Eastern Conference teams. I think Philadelphia, off the top of my head, is one of them that haven't played as many games as the teams in the True. Uh, I mean, West Phil- have. Philadelphia's only played 12 games, while a lot of these other teams have played 13, 14 games. Real Salt Lake, though, they've only played 11 games, and they're in third place. Right, but if you look at the points per game, you see that the Union would be fourth in the West. True. So if, if you're doing that... You know, maybe that's a more fair way to that look is at true. it. That is true. Yeah, the Union. Uh, well, they would tie the San Jose Earthquakes actually for, for sixth. Oh, you're right. Look at that. They would tie. Hmm. San Jose's got a better home record, so I think that would. Well, who's got the better goal difference? San or Philly's got the better goal difference, so Philly would technically be in sixth place in the Western Conference. Interesting. And it's mm-hmm. funny, too, for a team as much like Sporting Kansas City as we continue to dog on, they would be in second place right now. They'd actually be in fifth place. Boy, we're going back and forth here. Vancouver oh, would right. still be in sixth. That is right. Anyways, still, valid point. Philadelphia would be the only team from the mm-hmm. East, even on points per game, that would make the playoffs <laughs> in the West. That's sad. It's very sad. The Red Bulls, well, they're continuing to work their way up the table as well, too. We'll see what happens with them. Uh, and we kind of agree here from henceforth on yeah. out on the rest of our predictions. Let me just say, with the, I have Philly over New York because, yes, New York had that awesome mm-hmm. demolition of 7-0 over NYCFC, and they had that win over Chicago. I feel Philadelphia has been more consistent over the season. That is true. I, is I can, I I can respect that. I can respect that that point. Uh, our number three is the LA Galaxy for both of us. Uh, the Galaxy, they've only lost once this year, and I think because they've, they've drawn the last two games, 2-2 in Philly, 2-2 in San Jose, they drew a couple weeks ago against Sporting Kansas City. I think we're losing sight a little bit about those you know, those thrashings that they put on, especially against a team like Houston and RSL, and even New England as well, too. But they only lost 1-0 to, to Colorado early on. Right. Um, but again, these are power rankings. Mm-hmm. There's, there, there's a lot more yellow on the results map exactly. than there is green. Exactly. And that's why they stay at three. I agree. No, I completely agree with you on that one. Moving up to number two, Simon, who do we got? I got FC Dallas. They were number five for both of us last week. But uh, talking about consistent play, they've, they've you go on a really turned win streak. it around. Yeah, you go on a three-game win streak and you score a total of eight goals in three games. Not bad. Not and and against good teams as exactly. well. Exactly. That's the thing. They beat a Portland team, a Seattle team, and then they beat New England as well, right. too. So they've, only, they've given up four goals in those three games, but they've scored eight goals to top that, though. Number one in the league, the How third week no? in a row, Colorado no? Rapids. It's interesting. How do you say no right now? I mean, they've, they've lost twice this year. They lost 1-0 to San Jose opening day, and they lost uh, week five to RSL. After that, they've just been on a dominant run from there out. I mean, they've drawn twice. To Columbus, 1-1, one, one, and Montreal, 2-2. Two, two. But other than that, 1-1, one, one, six, one, oh, six wins. 1-0, one, oh, one, yeah. oh, three, one, two, one. They just 2-1. They just they keep winning. They keep winning. They It'll just, be interesting this week, you know, with, with the international call-ups. Yeah. You know, that's what makes some of those predictions really tough. And mm-hmm. I think that is part of my lackadaisical, ah, ah, True. Because, you, exactly. you know, it's, it's hard to really get. And that's the tough thing about this league is you start to get a feel for the teams, and, and all of a sudden the it's, summer comes and throws yep. everything out the window. Everything out the window. Uh, nothing happens next summer, though. 
Well, Confederations Cup with the U.S. didn't make it, so. Right. We got nothing yeah, to worry about next see. summer. Next summer. World Cup's in two years. It's a matter of Dos Santos. Does he accept the call up? Or Probably would, not. Will he ever get called up again after denying this last one? I don't know. If he continues to score goals in bunches, I feel like you might get a little bit of criticism from the national team and from the coach saying, you're, you're scoring. You're one of the most iconic names in Mexican soccer history. Why are you not playing for us? Yeah, you know, yeah. Maybe he just doesn't like the coach. I've heard major news about that. All right, moving on to our final spot of the show. All right, Simon, it is time for our I Believe segment where we both offer a prediction or a belief about something that we believe will happen in the soccer world. So many things to choose from, Simon. Copa America is right around the corner, the Euros, the Olympics, MLS, NWSL. Take your pick. What are you going with? I'm actually going to forego my I believe this week, Baxter, and I want to. Uh, you can't, you can't, it's not like data. You can't roll it over oh, for no, next you, week. You, you'll appreciate this, okay. though. You'll appreciate this it. Is T-Mobile. It's, it is Memorial Day weekend coming up. Sure. Let us not forget the sacrifices that mm. men and women had made for this country, the Amen. ultimate sacrifice of their lives, so that we can do things like two up front exactly. and have this wonderful show. So, folks. It's not, as, as the Facebook meme says, it is not National Barbecue Day. It is Memorial Day for a reason. So thank you. If you're serving, thank you. Um, if, if you are part of a family in which somebody has given their life for this country, thank you and God bless you. I have nothing else to say besides that. So uh, I'm content with that. Thank you very much, everybody. We appreciate your, uh, your service and your support as well of Two Up Front. A very special thanks to all of our guests today, Washington Spirit and U.S. Women's International, Crystal Dunn, Andy Davi, and Declan Rodriguez from the Milwaukee Torrent. Go check out their game this upcoming weekend, June 4th, if you want to travel down to the Chicago Mustangs. Go check out that game. We've got a great one coming up for them. Not this weekend, the June 4th weekend. That'll be the next one. And then their big game that's coming up as well, June 11th, the home opener. Simon and I will be there as well if you're tuning in. Uh, you can hear the broadcast. Simon will be doing the PA announcing. We'll be having a, a heck of a time. You're not going to want to miss it. And then special thanks to Simon's new best friend, Josh Hakala, as well, from the <laughs> Cup.us, the senior editor and founder as well. Bethlehem Steel! Woo! You can catch all these interviews as well on our website, which is twoupfrontsoccer.wix.com, backslash twoupfront. And uh, remember, Friday is 11.30 a.m. Central Time on the Sports Podcasting Network, and then On Demand, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spreaker.com. Next week, just to give you a little bit of a tease, a couple big interviews coming up for you. D.C. United goalkeeper Andrew Dykstra will be here with us. Houston Dash goalkeeper Lydia Williams. It's a week of goalkeepers, Simon. And then Brian Dunseth as well, Sirius XM, will be here with us as well. We're going to be a lot more Copa America next week, so you're not going to want to miss that one. Here are our predictions. Will the U.S. go far? Will they not? Will Jurgen Klinsmann still have a job? I'm sure Simon's got plenty of comments about that, and I will as well. <laughs> yeah, whatever. So make sure you check us out there, but as well on social media as well. Yeah, on Facebook, 2 up front. On Twitter, find us at 2 up front Soccer, or you can find our personal handles at Baxter Colburn, at Simon Provan. Thank you so much for tuning in. He's Simon Provan. I'm Baxter Colburn, with our manager being the one above. We are 2 up front. For listening to SPN, the Sports Podcasting Network, visit us, sportspodcastingnetwork.com.